And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. The injuries are piling up around the NHL once again, and it's our duty to help you out with that. Brought to you by our good friends over at Skip. It's time for another episode of NHL Fantasy on Ice, Week 14, Waiver Wire Edition, Nick Alberga, Pete Jensen, and Anna Deal with you. What's going on, Pete? How are you, buddy? What's up, Nick? Skip, of course, the official food delivery app of the NHL, and tough injury news for the Ooh. league right now with Connor Bedard out indefinitely, fractured jaw. Uh, this is a big blow to a one-man show, Chicago Blackhawks. They did win Anna in his absence, but I know you were in the building when he was injured, and that's a big blow for the league right now. Yeah, it wasn't my fault, just putting that out there first. But, man, there was fight night over at The Rock. Connor Bedard got injured. Nick Felino also injured for the Chicago Blackhawks. So hmm. you really wonder where they're going to go from here. The New Jersey Devils have their own share of injuries right now. So maybe the waiver wire has never been as important as it is this week. Oh, it's the most important. It will be all season long, I think, today. First and foremost, Luke Richardson is going to win the Jack Adams Trophy. Let's get that out of the way first. (laughs) And any intention of getting Macklin Celebrini first overall, not going to happen because they're a wagon now. But I think if you're owning any Chicago Blackhawks, I don't know what you're doing at this point. It's just just such a tough, tough blow when you look at the trajectory of, of Connor Bedard, what he means for selling tickets for that team. But luckily, Pete, there's a lot of guys on the waiver wire. There's a lot of guys in general who can help fantasy owners out, right, with with losing Connor Bedard indefinitely is all they're saying right now, right? Right. So I wanted to talk about Jason Dickinson. That's a guy a couple of weeks ago that I know uh, you were high on, Nick, and waiver wire James, uh, you know, in the shadows here, right? He's always still providing his picks, and I know he's high on that player. He's elevated to number one center. The problem with Chicago is, like, everybody's injured, right? Not just Felino and Bedard, but Seth Jones still isn't back. Taylor Hall's out for the season. I mean, Anna, like, are you putting any stock in a player like Dickinson, who is somehow plus eight on that, you know, shell of a team right now? It's pretty impressive what he's done. Uh, it is. I'm not putting any stock in him. I feel like if you want any replacements, <laughs> you got to look at Spurly. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, love and light to Chicago. Great city. They're just not looking great right now, and there are better options elsewhere. I love the Winnipeg Jets, guys. The Winnipeg Jets are the best team in the NHL in January. It's absolute insanity what they managed to pull <laughs> off, and they have a guy who's on our waiver wire list this week in Vladislav Nemesnikov, and he's playing on a pretty solid second line over there in Winnipeg with Cole Perfetti and Alex Ayafalo, so when you have that option, why are you choosing someone on the Blackhawks? There's no reason for that. Well, but to be fair to Dickinson, Bedard has 15 goals. Dickinson has 13. So he could pass him next game if he has a multi-goal game. So he has been pretty good in a couple of different categories. But yeah, I see the uh, I see your point in terms of just fading the team at this uh, juncture of the season. It's such a crucial blow, guys. I, I just can't get behind anybody on that Blackhawks roster. I think they're going to be tough to play against, but I think to your point, Pete, there are some guys you would look at. Ryan O'Reilly has been on fire again the last seven, two goals, seven assists. Charlie Coyle, a six-game point streak here with the Boston Bruins, four goals, four assists, eight points. And then even Morgan Geeky centering Pavel Zaka and David Pasternak. There seems to be a lot of value in, uh, in the top six right now for the Boston Bruins here. Yeah, and there always is. I feel like this is a team that we're waiting for them to like kind of fall off. And even when they move players around, it seems to click for them night after night. So the Bruins are clearly a safer bet than the Chicago Blackhawks, guys. I feel like you can't go wrong with getting any of those top six players. You know, it's a pretty safe bet right now. The Kraken, they're on a six-game winning streak, and they're getting the band back together. Sounds like Jaden Schwartz is coming back for their upcoming game. It at least appears that that's going to be the case. Andre Burakovsky scored his first goal in a while in his third game back from injury for the Kraken. And, you know, you just mix and match that top nine forward group. It's still as deep as any team in the league, even their fourth line. Like, that's that was their bread and butter right there, uh, formula last season that worked so well even though they lost some guys in the offseason Seattle's extremely deep and they got the goaltending too as you brought up Joey Decord last week so obviously the big news here with Connor Bedard I did want to shift the focus here to the waiver wireless as as mentioned and obviously abundance of players on the Seattle Kraken that you can pick up nhl.com slash fantasy for this week's waiver wireless Pete will start uh, with a guy who can be a great replacement we're going to get the Jack Hughes a bit later on banged up again here for New Jersey but Jonathan Drewen is a guy really finding his footing, and it seems like we're watching the Val Nachushkin story all over again for the Colorado Avalanche, isn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, I will say, I know we touched on it a little bit last show, the Avalanche have some serious issues this season in terms of, you know, different points in the lineup. Guys are missing now. Bowen Byram's on IR. Makar is out every other handful of games, it seems. They are switching up the top line, and it is benefiting Jonathan Drouin. But again, if the team's not playing well, they're going to shuffle the deck more times than not every other game, uh, an ugly loss the other day against the Panthers. So I just think like Colorado, I'm just like a little wary of that team where I've been so sold on them in years past. They got a lot of flaws this year. We've been waiting for this to happen with Drew and I want to roll back the tapes from our preseason shows. And we're saying this was the last chance we're giving him. And I thought that chance was over, but now all of a sudden, even though he played with Nathan McKinnon earlier in the year, he looks like a different guy playing with (laughs) Nathan McKinnon right now. It's absolute insanity with four goals in his last three games. It's great to see, and as Pete referenced, that it would just be so good to see Colorado get healthy, but they just can't do it. Or Terry Lekkinen is another guy we're going to be eyeballing over the next month, month and a half, to see when he, in fact, returns to that Colorado Avalanche lineup. But as mentioned, I mean, there are some guys around, more, mostly wingers. I think if you're looking for center-eligible uh, options, not as many. I did list a couple there in the Boston top six. Ryan O'Reilly, too. Um, some other names that really popped up this week, Pete. Who did you want to bring up here? Well, just sticking with, I know I said I wasn't completely sold on the Avalanche, but on yeah. defense, especially if you're going to tell me that um, a player like Byram's going to be out, like Josh Manson's been really good for category coverage. Sam Gerrard, great to see him back. That's a feel good story after he was in the player assistance program. Two assists in his first four games back, still relatively young and untapped, I would say. Uh, from a fantasy standpoint. So it's like, even though you can like dissect the avalanche and some of the issues they may have on the ice, they still have enormous depth and guys that step up at different times in the season. And that's a scary thing with them. I I think they're a team that just, you know, they, they sort of the first 50, 60 games of the season, you're like, you know what, we're here, we're going to play sometimes, sometimes we're not. And then they turn it into gear. So that's the key. Mm -hmm. And obviously the trade deadline coming up on March 8th, we'll see the Colorado avalanche add Pete, this is the perfect tee up for a team that you're so interested in, have been interested in for the entirety of this season. Joel Farabee of the Philadelphia Flyers has been cooking as of late, hasn't he? He has. I mean, he's been one of their best even strength point producers all season long. He's always on Konechny's tail and Konechny, really, we have to just stop back and look, step back and look at it, right? This yeah. guy has become an elite player in the NHL over the past two to three seasons. Not enough people are talking about it because the Flyers up until this season were a non-contender, but Anna, like Konechny has been one of the top 50 forwards in the entire league, and he's looking more like a top 25, 30 forward this season. Yeah, he's having an unreal year, and I feel like we all knew that he could do this, but maybe just had some doubt in terms of Philadelphia as a team, but now you're seeing other pieces kind of step up to the bat, and it's not just Travis Konechny and and everyone else, and for me, Joel Farabee is one of those players that I think people just overlook him because they don't realize how tough of a recovery he had from his injury, and they kind of Mm -hmm. like forget that maybe that's the reason he slumped a little bit, and he's going off the rocker this year, just performing so well great top line placement and I'm not shocked by it sometimes it takes guys a while to come back from as big of a surgery as he had John Tortorella has done a fantastic job goes without saying there uh speaking of which the Dallas Stars are a team that we're monitoring this week in terms of the waiver wire I know they got a couple games coming up against the Minnesota Wild Mason Marchment and a four game point streak Three goals, six assists, nine points. You talk about elite category coverage. He's been on fire. But this has been the story of his career, right, where he catches fire for like six, seven, eight games, and he goes MIA, and he catches fire again, and he's in a hot stretch right now. That's the point of the waiver wire, right? So you want to stream him while he's doing well. He has really solid placement in Dallas's top six, too. And we talked about Matt Duchesne a couple of times in the past couple of weeks on this podcast. So if they're rocking and rolling, why wouldn't you look at a guy like Mason Marchman? And I like him. I was excited when he came to Dallas. I thought that was a good fit for him. And we'll see if he can keep it going. But regardless, I'm picking up right now for sure. I liked Marchman a couple of years ago when he was on that elite third line, right? Wasn't yeah. it? It actually was with Sam Reinhardt, I think. Who? And now Sam Rein- <laughs> Reinhardt is a top liner and not just a top liner. He's like second in the league in goals behind Austin Matthews. And after a Hattie the other day, he's like only two behind Matthews. I mean, maybe maybe on the Action Network collab show today, we might be sprinkling in a little Rocket Richard conversation after what Reinhardt's been up to. 
Yeah, he, he's had an impeccable season. Uh, I've made a point of being on social media to make sure there's no way the Florida Panthers can pay that guy. Because people want to troll the Maple Leafs now, they control the Florida Panthers and see how much they got to pay Sam Reinhardt. It, it's been an epic, hmm. epic contract year for him. Let's get to some blue liners, Anna. Uh, Hampus Lindholm on the list this week. Neil Pionk. Uh, I, for one, my defensemen always get hurt in fantasy hockey, so I'm always looking for the next best fit in terms of point production. Thomas Harley is another guy I'd bring up. Miro Haskinen's banged up right now, right? I feel like everyone's banged up right now. Defensemen usually True. more than most, but injuries are tough and brutal. I really, we mentioned Thomas Harley the last time I was on yeah. the show and I gave him enough credit. I think he's a solid option, but Neil Pionk, the Winnipeg Jets guys, I'm buying into this team. Like Love it. look at the way they're playing and they're playing this well, despite the injury concerns they had in their own right. So it's not like you knock their big guy down and all of a sudden without Kyle Connor, this team's a mess. No, they're rallying without Kyle Connor and becoming the best team team in the NHL and Neil Pionk's a part of that I would take any part of the Winnipeg Jets right now Nick even when you look at their blue line beyond Pionk there are other guys that have like I know Brendan Dillon has been really productive in category coverage like when you look at the Yahoo rankings he's like among the top 50 defensemen this season based on standard league production with the hits and the peripherals and stuff like that and chips in some scoring I know he did have like a really big performance uh, at one point this season in a single game, but like Winnipeg's super deep and Nemesnikov is a guy that we've been interested in in the past. Then he was injured and need a rider is like one of the best in the league in goals per 60 plays on the third line. It's a super team that they've built and uh, they kind of did it under the radar. We didn't see this coming. Really, really impressive. And uh, speaking of which, Alex Lyon, I think, has been a great story with Detroit. You want to talk about goaltending, guys. Uh, he has really, really solidified that crease. Important time here at Detroit, uh, Pete, and obviously a three-game win streak into California for them. Right, 4-1-0 and since coming back. I mean, we were harping on their struggles since Kane joined the team, but not anymore. They've they've won some big games. They right, they swept the California road trip, I believe. So uh, Detroit's back in the mix. And as much as you could look at, like I saw Buffalo um, won consecutive games for only the second time this season, but they're still like seven or eight points back. Detroit at least had that strong start to the season. Now they've weathered the storm, and then hopefully they could play well enough where they don't have to trade Patrick Kane at the deadline. They can watch him heat up and be on their side and make a playoff push here. Again, they're still ahead of schedule, I still think, based on uh, where they were at the start of the season. It's just really tough, though, in the standings. I don't know, guys. I mean, in the Eastern Conference, like, I'm looking around and teams are not going to be in the mix and Detroit trying to sneak in there at the end of it with the struggles they had towards the end of last calendar year. I don't know if it's going to happen. Tampa is the team that I think might heat up and really squeeze someone else out of that playoff spot. But has it ever been this close, Nick, in like January of a season that you can remember like to get into the playoffs? Like every single t like team right now is pretty much in contention minus like just a handful. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, you look at the uh, amount of elite teams or teams we thought were elite, like New Jersey and Tampa are in the conversation. Washington's got Max Patch ready back in the mix. And and that's a curiosity for me. I mean, there's a lot of time, obviously, until March 8th in the trade deadline. But like, who's real? Who's not? Uh, I mentioned over the weekend on, on Twitter, Tampa is just a team that's missing something. I mean, it's just been a tough mm -hmm. goal for Vasilevsky. Defensively, not the same. I know Sergachev's banged up, but like it's so close in the standings where you lose a game, you drop three or four slots in the standings and you're up against it, Pete. So, I mean, that's a big time story, evolving story in this league. And uh, as it pertains to fantasy hockey, I think it hurts some value of some players. No, it definitely does. And I, I think you got to be uh, circling it back to fantasy, you know, with so many different teams and the competitive balance of the league, you got to be really aware of injury returns. I mentioned Jaden Schwartz earlier. There's Thomas Shabbat came back. He's been a machine since coming back with assists and shots on goal, right? There are other guys that have been on the mend at different points. I know Sergachev's still out for Tampa, so you got to see if someone emerges there. Probably go outside the box there. But even Zuccarello, like people probably don't remember how good Zuccarello was prior to his injury, comes back on Saturday, one assist and seven shots on goal. That's a huge game in the win against Columbus. So 
Like if you can in fantasy trade for one of these guys that's about to come back from injury, I think it's a huge storyline because sometimes the waiver wire isn't as deep in some leagues. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, again, as we reference off the top of the show, there are just so many injuries and delivered by our good friends over at Skip. We got a lot of questions about Jack Hughes injury replacements. And uh, weirdly enough, a game you were at, Jack Hughes got hurt. <laughs> Connor Bedard got hurt. I'm not going to say the uh, common trend and theme is you, but uh, you were in attendance. But in-house. Your boy uh, Dawson Mercer gets elevated to the top six. I would look at him externally. Gustav Nyquist, an eight-game point streak here for the Preds. Jake DeBrusque, a six-game point streak with Boston. We talked about Marchman. Anybody else you're looking at, Anna? That's a big-time loss in New Jersey. I don't want to say it just yet, but I'm starting to wonder if that team's going to make the playoffs. I'm getting to that point. They don't have a goalie. Jack Hughes is hurt again. Hamilton's done. They're talking about LTIRing uh, Dougie Hamilton. Get to the playoffs first, and that's my concern with that team. Lindy Ruff on the hot seat first and foremost i would just like to announce that the devils did in fact still win that game so i can't control the injuries but i'm just saying <laughs> they're pretty good when i'm in the building in terms of what's left on the score sheet at the end of the night but yeah dawson mercer he's been heating up i think like the time to pick him up has well passed because he was playing really well with nico Heischer before the jack hughes injury happened but that team you're right is in a little bit of a hole right now i think they bounce back once they get all these guys healthy you don't really know how long they're out for but I mentioned earlier Vladislav Nemesnikov I feel like that's the guy that I'm looking at to replace any of these injured centers whether it be Connor Bedard or Jack Hughes on your roster just because guys like I've said it like five times but I don't think we're like giving enough credit to the fact that the Winnipeg Jets are the best team in the NHL like best team in you the NHL last period week show right now. now. Sorry. Did you? Last okay, sorry. Show, yeah. I didn't listen to it back. My bad. I was Shut on up. vacation. I was on vacation. <laughs> I was celebrating my birthday in Arizona. Okay. But man, yes. my goodness, the Winnipeg Jets second line center. There's no brainer that that's the best option for a replacement. Absolutely no excuse. You had a flight both ways. You gotta <laughs> you gotta tune back, listen back to your buddies here. But no, we'll, we'll give you a pass there. I think yeah. um, when you look at the goaltending position, uh, it's another big injury development with Ottinger coming back and you got some guys near the bottom of the top 25 rankings playing really well like Lyon we said Martin Jones uh, welcome back Martin Jones he's one of the hottest goalies in the league you love to see it so uh, is anybody else jumping out to you guys or are you back on the Marty Jones train Jesper Wallstead has been called up by the uh, Minnesota Wild and uh, Mark Andre Fleury, great success story. Just can't play every game anymore. And yeah. uh, obviously, uh, Gustafson's banged up right there. So I would look this week to see where they filter him in. I know there's a back to back coming up Friday, Saturday, Philadelphia and Arizona. They got a home and home with Dallas, eleven and nine, coming back from injury, two point five four nine one seven two shutouts. So we could see Wallstead's NHL debut coming up this week. And, uh, and that's obviously a name we've monitored in, in dynasty leagues and keeper leagues uh, coming up the forefront here for the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, Pete and I pumped his tires in the preseason too as one of the younger goalies at NHL Futures that we were most excited about. So it's good that he gets the opportunity. Minnesota is one of those teams that like they were looking real good after the coaching changed and they bounce back, look like their old selves again. And I really can't figure out the wild. But once they get some stability in the crease, like truly maybe that's the game changer for this team because they have such a high powered offense with so many players who can score and they're getting some guys back into the lineup that missed some time like Matt. Zuccarello so maybe this is all they need to turn it around and go on another here we just talked about the standings being so close uh, I think the ungluing of this season is going to be losing Kaprizov and losing Gustafson uh, Jared Spurgeon's hurt again like they they just been ravaged by injury in Minnesota so certainly something to monitor moving forward with that team and how they approach the NHL trade deadline not to mention if they do make the playoffs you look at you know everything surrounding Parisi and Suter they're paying like 15 million bucks for guys not to be on their roster and I think Bill Guerin has done a, pre, a pretty decent job there, delivered by uh, our good friends over at Skip. Some injury replacement options. Uh, people are wondering about uh, Miro Haskinen. We talked about Thomas Harley. Gustav Forsling starting to heat up for Florida last seven games, seven points. Oliver Ekman Larson also with the Panthers, Pete. Uh, four games, last four, I should say. One goal, three assists. Sean Dersey on that list. There are some defensemen you can help. I want to throw in as well, Pete. The by -low window is closing on Brent Burns. We brought this up about a month mm -hmm. ago. His last 10, three goals, seven assists, 10 points. And seven of those 10, Pete, have come on the power play here for the Canes. Nice. That's vintage Burns. Yeah, you like to see that. And mm. I was looking also on defense, Brock Faber. I know some people have been, you know, tooting his horn in terms of how good he's been and how valuable he's been to that wild team. And like players like that are just 
crucial as they try to weather the storm. And I'm excited to see Wallstead, but you already know that Faber is a rookie workhorse, especially with Bedard out of the mix. That's what I wanted to circle the conversation to here. Like, which other rookie do you see elevating his game and not necessarily winning the Calder Trophy at the end of the day, but like really making a push? Like, remember the one year it was Kaprizov and then Robertson had the great second half. There's got to be someone out there that we're not seeing. It could be Faber. It could be Luke Hughes. It could be, you know, Connor Zary in in Calgary. I mean, someone's got to be out there. Who do you think it's going to be, Anna? Piotr Kochekov. (laughs) Is he still a rookie? Yes. Somehow. He is. He is. And no one talks about it enough. And I'm just saying, if you listen to me, picked him up, held on to him. He's looking good. (laughs) You have to give him credit here. Why is he not in this conversation with the way he's been playing if Connor Bedard misses time, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How long is he going to miss is my question. Like, I saw Zidane Ochara, and he's a freak. He played, like, the next game. I looked at the odds before coming on. We're doing our, our, our collab later on with, uh, you know, I, I just think the market hasn't overreacted to the Bedard news. I just don't think anybody's even in the conversation. I'm sorry. Like, I, Logan Cooley is a, a guy we thought was going to be in the mix, really hasn't been. Fantilli. Um, to answer your question, maybe it's Fantilli, Pete. I, I think I'm looking for proper deployment and exposure to some big boys, and Fantilli's going to get the leash this year. Columbus is cooked. They're done. Um, so maybe that's my guy, Pete. But I, I think if you were to pull me right now, I, I still think Connor Bedard's winning the call there. Fantilli's really good. He's fast. He yeah. makes the most of his ice time. He's now the top-line center, but I guess Jenner's coming back. The only problem with Fantilli, he's not on first power play. I don't quite understand it. They're getting be- giving better usage on the power play to that kid, uh, Varankov, the other rookie in Columbus. So I'd love to see them out there together on the power play. Remember earlier in the season, I was like, I want to see Fantilli play with Johnny Gaudreau. It took him about three yeah. months to do it, and now they're both playing well together. So uh, maybe they should have done that a little sooner. <laughs> So a couple people tweeted me thinking I'm going to be happy that Bedard got injured. That's not <laughs> that is that. not the case, folks. The fact that he's not going to be in Toronto for the All Star that's a big hit. Everything I'm reading, we're looking at four to six weeks, Nick. And, and what's the Blackhawks' mm-hmm. motivation to run this kid back out there with a yep. broken jaw? I'm going to throw it your way, Nick. Like, how comfortable are you now about the points race here? I mean, if he misses not four to six weeks, no. I mean, it looks like Bob Bender is going to be winning that one, huh? Yeah, you never – I never like to see somebody get hurt. Um, credit to Brendan Smith, by the way, for stepping up. I know there's a lot of con- – that game was a lot of fun to watch. I'm more of an old-school person. I, I think it was old-school hockey. Credit uh, to Nick Foligno for stepping up. But, Bob, to answer your I am, I am feeling it. Uh, it was a tough Monday waking up today because I knew I'm pretty much done. I'm done. Like, he, he was barely at that mark, averaging near that mark, and now he's going to miss, what, 15 games, 10 games? I think it's over, Bob. I'm going to concede here. Wave the white flag to you, buddy. You're conceding already? Yeah. Wow. I thought you'd be a little bit more well, okay. stubborn than that. So here, No, but the thing is, he comes back. Who's he playing with? Like, Pete, I know you love Jason Dickinson, but come on. <laughs> like, uh, there's nobody on that roster. Like, the, the thing I don't understand, I was thinking about this last night. Why is Phil Kessel not a member of the Hawks today? Why hasn't that happened? The guy wants to play hockey unless he thinks he's going somewhere to win a Stanley Cup. I'm sorry. You want to play hockey, sign this guy, get some people in the seats there. Because who's going to the games now with Bedard not there? I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, they're making some moves, but not for a Kessel. <laughs> Rem Pitlick. Rem yes. Pitlick from Pittsburgh they acquired, and they claimed Zach Sanford, who had a couple of good games in the past with, like, the Blues, but those guys are not going to make that much of a difference, you would assume. So, yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, in terms of the Calder race, I will say that uh, Kachetkov, even when Bedard was healthy, when you look at, like, the standard league fantasy rankings, he was right there behind there him. So... Really, if Kachetkov is eligible, try to you know put something on that because that could really happen because we don't know when's Fred, when Freddie's coming back and Ranta hasn't been very good. So he's the starter moving forward in my book for Carolina. What a start to 2024 for me, guys. You know, Blessed. it's been a good Blessed. first week. Pyotr yeah. Kachekov's in the Calder conversation. <laughs> Just the best way to kick off the year. But I was going to say, Nick, you got to put some respect on the Blackhawks because Pete's buying up all these tickets right now to go watch Jason <laughs> Dickinson. Just tear it up for <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Look, I can't believe you came on here. That was your lead, Jason Dickinson, <laughs> that we're selling Jason Dickinson. <laughs> he's the next big thing he's the next big thing no i respect it he's having a great year and somebody's got to score for that team and i think they're going to surprise a lot of people like they did to calgary on sunday but that you lose bedard of that lineup jones is gone there's just not much much there that's why i think kess would be a great fit 
You have any interest in Brant Clark, uh, recently recalled from the LA Kings? I know that he has a chance if he sticks in the lineup to occupy that same spot that like Dursey had second yep, power play, exactly. but he just hasn't played that much. He played just his first game uh, last night, I believe, or this weekend. Yeah, I think they're going to insulate him really, really well. Um, but uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. I think he's going to have the exposure that, say, like a Dursey had before he went, obviously, to mm -hmm. Arizona. And I think they're going to slot him in where they can give, you know, Dowdy some rest. But I I think they're going to really, really be protective with this, Anna. Like, I, I don't think it's at a point where Brent Clark's going to play every night. Not to mention, L.A.'s been struggling. That's been a sidebar story where it's like, you know, maybe a month and a half ago, it was like L.A.'s winning the Stanley Cup. Now everybody's crazy about the Florida Panthers, understandably so the Winnipeg Jets, the Edmonton Oilers. So it just shows you the ups and downs and how long an 82-game slate truly is. They, they're, they're looking to find their game. Another crazy, busy week for, for the LA Kings coming up here. Yeah, it's going to go down to the wire. LA is always kind of like this, though, because you yeah. think they're like a very solidly built team. But I feel like the storyline for LA for the past couple of seasons truly has been Adrian Kempe and everyone else. And you're seeing that continue right now because he's truly the shining star in LA. And a lot of their pieces just haven't stepped up to the mark, guys. Like, once again, like, Winnipeg looks to have won this trade right now because Pierre-Luc Dubois isn't really doing much in LA. And they're not having the depth that they thought they had. And and it's just, I don't know, Kevin Fiala is not looking as great as they advertised either as of recent. And it's just really the big guys up on their top line and everyone else has kind of fallen off. I love those, like, let's start a conversation threads on X. Um, somebody did one for Jason Dickinson and PLD. And I thought it was hilarious because one guy makes like eight and a half million more bucks than the other guy. But uh, yeah, it's been a tough start for PLD with the LA Kings. Not really a story because LA has been winning hockey games. Once they don't, then... I think you're in big time trouble in that conversation. Let's get to the schedule this week, January 8th to 14th. Uh, 50 games in total, four on Monday, 10 Tuesday, three Wednesday, 13 on Thursday, two on Friday, 16 Saturday, and then two on Sunday. The four-game teams, Boston, Dallas, Minnesota, the Rangers, Philadelphia, Toronto, Vancouver, that's seven. And the two-game teams you want to stay away from from a waiver potential, Carolina, Columbus, and the New Jersey Devils, three game, uh, three teams with two game weeks there. And I think that's good news for the Devils. They nurse some injuries here, Pete. Right. And I did, well, you're talking about like the Kings struggles. I just wanted to add that Edmonton all of a sudden is only five points back of LA with the same number of games Crazy. played. So yeah. if you polled me right now, I'd say at the end of the day, Edmonton will surpass the LA Kings. And, Ooh. Uh, maybe they'll meet in the playoffs again. We'll see. Spicy, spicy. And any thoughts on, on Edmonton? I'm like lukewarm. I know their their fans are excited here, but last time I checked, they still haven't uh, acquired a goaltender. So <laughs> It's true. It's true. Pete and I were talking about this too, just in general, because the World Juniors just happened, guys. And Pete and I were having a discussion about in best on best international tournaments, who would be the goalie for Team Canada because they're just struggling. And Pete was like, you know what? Maybe it ends up being Stuart <laughs> Skinner. You never know. But in terms of Probably. Edmonton, I think we all knew that this team has such a high powered offense that you're never really going to be able to stop them. And sometimes if your offense is good enough, you don't need the world's most solid goalie. I don't think you can win a Stanley Cup that way, but I think you can make a deep run that way. All right, guys, so we got uh, Monday's slate coming up here in the NHL. we got the Action Collab coming up with Leboff later here on Monday. Pete, uh, any spots you're looking at? Uh, the, the one that sticks out to me right away, Boston at Colorado. The Avalanche have to be a little annoyed with the way things went down on Saturday afternoon against Sam Reinhardt and the Florida Panthers. So I expect a bounce back for Colorado against Boston here, Pete. Yeah, I mean, I like, again, we've been on this in the past, like Flyers uh, still mm -hmm. underdog against the Penguins. Flyers are the better team. Uh, they have been all season. So look for some uh, different, you know, points there in terms of DFS plays. And we've mentioned Farabee. You know, I love Tippett, uh, Sanheim, those guys. Vancouver is a really strong team. Look at JT Miller, probably going to have a huge game against the Rangers, his former team. And yeah, I think uh, when you look at Minnesota, like I was really encouraged by Zuccarello. So a Zuccarello prop uh, is never a bad thing, especially against the Stars. If Jake Ottinger is not returning yet, you have Ottinger still out, but on the mend and Haskin and out for, for Dallas. Those are huge blows on the back end for that team. I got to jump in because we have a Pete Jensen, Bob Bender head to head oh, here on a Monday night. I completely disagree with you about the uh, Philly angle. I like Pittsburgh. <laughs> They're playing a little bit better. And now is the time. 
if you would have told me before the season that Philly at home would be, you know, basically even money or so, they're, they're short underdogs. I like the Pittsburgh Penguins. They're playing a little bit better. They already lost to Philly once this year. Give me the Penguins tonight. It's uh, it's one of my favorite plays of the year, to be honest. And we're going head to head with Pete Jensen. We'll see who comes out on top. They lost to uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, Philadelphia beat Pittsburgh twice this year, actually, Bob. Oh, oh even better. That's even better. They're, they're going to beat them three times. Yes. You're going to beat him three times, Anna? Yes. Okay, yeah. well, you go, I'll go head-to-head head with you, too. Then we got a Pete Jensen, Anna Dua, head-to-head. Head. When you guys lose, we'll be taking a little walk over to one of the fine dining establishments around the office on Foods. Manhattan West, and you will be buying me lunch. Thank you very much. I, I, think a, I think a $30 pastrami sandwich will do me pretty well at some point this wow. week when the yeah. Penguins... When the Penguins get it done against Philly tonight. This guy's back in the Penguins. It's like me back in the Ottawa Senators. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Kyle Dubas goes to pick up Eric Carlson, leaves Jake Gensel rate right the free agency. Great story. Great story there. Anyways, anything else to add here, guys? I'm looking forward to the NHL Action Network yeah. collab a little later. Make sure to stay tuned for that. And uh, that, of course, presented by Bet365. He's been foaming out of the mouth for this like collab. Month, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can't wait. We got Leboff coming on here shortly. So, Anna, anything uh, for Monday before we uh, put a bow on it? I'll give you one prop. Eric Sinek, guys, take the over on shots. Over Ooh. on shots. That's a lock. I promise. Love my shot props. I sure do. Week 14 mailbag coming up uh, later on this week. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Thanks to producer Bob Bender for Pete Jensen and Anna Dua. I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy Nice delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL.